We've got some pretty exciting news coming out of Project Iris. We are now going to be getting a desktop app. And in this video, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick overview and teaser of it. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. If you are new here, please consider going down below the video and subscribing to the channel as we work our way towards 30,000 subscribers. Now let's go ahead and get chatting about this new Project Iris desktop app. What they've actually done here is create an application that we can do a bunch of customization to our Project Iris build right from our computer. Now, we can obviously still load games by loading games into the transfer folder and then allowing Project Iris to automatically filter them, but we do have a lot more control now and swapping images out, editing data, even configuring folders and things like that is actually going to be a lot easier. Now, I do want to mention that the desktop app is actually really neat because we don't need to install this onto our computer. It is a standalone application. Essentially, all you're gonna to need to do is download the application, scroll on down and find the executable file and double click on it. Then it's gonna automatically launch. There's nothing that needs to be installed directly onto your computer. Everything's gonna run right from the standalone application. Now I do want to mention the version that I have up and running right now is in beta. There are still lots of bugs, lots of problems, and there's gonna be some tweaks I would imagine to some of the configuration and even the options that we can choose. So keep in mind what you see as a final product when it's released may be different than what you see right here. Now, when I make my actual tutorial video for this, when it's actually going to be released to the public, I'll go through a lot of this stuff in a lot more detail. Right now, I'm just gonna give you guys an overview of what this thing is actually capable of doing. First thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and select our drive. I know mine is in the H drive and I've already pre-configured mine. As you're gonna see along the left-hand side, there is a ton of games here and you'll probably notice that they are not all PlayStation games. One of the really cool, exciting features is now we can load different consoles right into our Project Iris carousel. So things like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, PSP, Nintendo DS, pretty much anything that you would have running through Emulation Station can now display properly right in the Project Iris carousel. And that's going to include the metadata, it's going to include the artwork, it's gonna include everything that you want, as you can see here with the Legend of Spyro for Nintendo DS. Now you can absolutely add games here if you want. You can go ahead and press the plus button. It'll create a new folder all the way down on the bottom. As you can see, folder 69 has been created. And then you can just drag and drop a PlayStation game on here. But this isn't actually the easiest way to transfer your games, especially if you're gonna be doing more than a few. You're gonna wanna use that transfer folder on the root of your USB drive, allow Project Iris to go ahead and categorize those games, and then they will display here when you plug in the USB drive next and launch this application. And the only reason I make that recommendation is because it is going to process a lot faster. Right now with the desktop app, you do have to add the game files and then manually scrape everything. So if you're gonna be loading up 50 games, you don't wanna scrape them manually. You're gonna want it to be an automatic process and then you can go in there and adjust things if you need to. That being said, they do have some auto scraping options. For example, if I go ahead and press the file option, then I've got some scan options. So you can load things into the transfer folder and you can scan from there, assuming you haven't let Project Iris already scan them and assign artwork and all those sort of things to the games. Additionally, you can go ahead and scan your ROM folders. If you've loaded up all of your games into the emulation station folders, the ROM folder located right on the root of your USB drive, you can go ahead and press this and it'll scan every single folder and any games that are in there will pop up and you can actually assign artwork and those sort of things right through the application as well. But to show you guys what that looks like, you would just click one of the scan from directories. We're gonna go RetroArch, and it's gonna go ahead and pop up a game scraper box. Now, as you can see, nothing is displayed. And if I hit search, nothing's coming up. And that's likely because of the characters that are located in the title of the game itself. You may need to actually adjust the name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this God of War Chains of Olympus and just search God of War for PSP. And as you can see, all of the God of War games are gonna come up you would go ahead and select the Chains of Olympus. The metadata is gonna automatically pop up and it's also going to display the artwork right over here. If you are happy with that, you would go ahead and hit accept. Now I've already pre-scraped all of these, so I'm not gonna do that. But once you hit accept, it'll just say, hey, here's the next game. 
and then it'll just keep going on through the list until you've scraped all the artwork. And if you find a game that doesn't give you the proper artwork or you're not happy with it for whatever reason, you can skip the game and it won't input it into this database over here. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and cancel and skip. And now you can see we've got one PlayStation game. I've got a bunch of Nintendo DS games, but I've also got things like Nintendo, Super Nintendo over here, and even N64. Now, the cool thing here, as I said, is we can actually import these games into the Project Iris carousel, and we can do it actually with our folder manager. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is hit generate database, and then we're gonna be given this folder manager right over here. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that there is a folder list. Again, I preset mine up. You will not have anything located over in this folder list area. You will, however, have all of your games located right over here. Now, there is an automatic button. Once you click that, it'll automatically filter your games by console over on the left-hand side. This home folder and this ports folder were created by me personally, but all the consoles will be there. If you need to create a new folder, you click this button, and it'll ask you, what do you wanna name that folder? And then you can also assign artwork. Now, if I click browse picture, it's gonna take us onto our USB drive where all the folder art is. Now, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of console artwork that will not be included with your build. This is something I personally created and I created artwork for pretty much every single console that we have folders for in Emulation Station. And I'll probably end up leaving a link to it if it doesn't get automatically included with the next update in the description down below. And I'll give you guys the instructions on where you can transfer all these images so that way they will be visible with all the stock folder images that we've got as well. So you would create whatever you want. We can call the Spiral, for example, then you would name it. And then once you hit okay, that's it. Now you've got a new folder. Now, obviously there is nothing in this folder, but what you can do is you can grab a game, for example, the Legend of Spyro. We're gonna move it over here. And now this is going to live inside of our Spyro folder. And that's what that blue button did. It just moved the game from our all games into our Spyro section. You can have the same game in multiple folders. Now, as I mentioned, I did create a couple of folders. One of them is a ports folder. And if you take a peek on the bottom, it says choose a folder for launchers. I've created that ports folder in order to have a dedicated folder specifically for those ports. And then I created a home folder and that's going to be the folder that you launch into. When you launch Project Iris, the home folder is going to be where it takes you out of the gate. Once you're happy with how that looks, you can go ahead and hit the generate button. It'll automatically create the database on your USB drive. And then you're more or less done with the software. What you can actually do is take your USB drive and pop it into your PlayStation Classic. Now, before I do that, I do wanna go over a couple more features that are available. If we go into the tools section, we have a check bin, and that's just gonna make sure that the information in your bin queue or PBP file is accurate. We can also go ahead and adjust our memory card manager. All of that information is going to be available to us right here. Additionally, in the tools section, we have our launchers manager. So here is where you have all of your launchers that are visible, but let's say you don't like one of the launchers you installed. And rather than going through the process of uninstalling it or deleting it, you just don't want it visible on your carousel build anymore. So what you can do is you can go ahead and select one. For example, I've got the Doom port. You can go ahead and move it over to the hidden launchers and then you can hit accept. And now that Doom port is no longer gonna be visible anywhere on your USB drive. It will still live on the USB drive, but it won't be visible in the front end of Project Iris. And then the other thing that I'm gonna chat about is mods and themes. So if we click on the mods cloud, it's gonna give us access to all of the ports available for Project Iris on the Mod My Classic website. So if you wanted to add a port, you can actually do it right from here. You click on the port that you want, it'll automatically display everything for you, it'll give you all the information on what you need to do to get it running, but all you need to do is hit the download button. It's going to automatically download the mod onto your USB drive in the mods folder, and then when you plug in your USB drive and turn it on, you're actually gonna have that mod automatically install. So it is really nice. You can do everything right from within this application that way. Additionally, we also have our theme cloud. And as you can see, there are only three that are visible, but once you click on them, the process is exactly the same. You would click on the theme, it'll automatically load in the theme details. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer depending on their server. And then it'll give you a little preview of what that theme is. And if you like it, you can go ahead and hit the download button. 
Once it's downloaded, it'll go directly into the mods folder, just like any other port. And then if you want to select that theme, you just need to go into the options menu at the boot menu. And I am going to show you that I did load up this Cerulean theme as well. So I'm going to show you guys how that looks, but that's pretty much it in terms of a preview for the desktop app. As I said, when this is going to be released, I will go through this in much more detail and show you guys all of the different options, how to add a game, how to scrape the artwork, how to load your metadata, how to do all of those sort of things. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as is. So let's go ahead and jump over to the PlayStation Classic so I can show you guys those folders, the games in the carousel, and that new theme that we just downloaded. All right, so here we are on our boot menu. And I do wanna mention that not really much is gonna change in terms of our boot menu or our navigation or any of the other main features of Project Iris, but any of the configuration that we did on the desktop app should now be visible. So the first thing that we're gonna do is jump into our settings section with the L1 button, and we're gonna go ahead and navigate down to our themes option. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna show you that after you download the themes from the desktop app, it should be available here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. So we've got our stock theme, Mod My Classic, and we do have that Cerulean theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then all that we need to do in order to test it out is press the start button to save and reset. So I'm gonna do that really quickly and then we're gonna probably jump right on back to our boot menu. All right, so here we are. Now, as I mentioned, it did take me back to the boot menu. However, when it did that, it actually powered down the console and you do have to power it back on. So just be prepared for that. And I should mention that themes aren't 100% new. They've been around for a little while now. We just now have access to do all of these sort of things, our mods, our themes, folder manager, everything right from the desktop app. And it's, uh, it's a lot cleaner of a process to get it all set up that way. Now we're gonna jump into Project Iris so I can show you guys those new folders. Okay, so here we are. As you guys can see, all of our ports are still going to display on our home screen. And this is something that I'm hoping gets changed. It may not happen in the first release, but it is something that I'm hoping they take care of down the road. Just because it would be nice to not have any of the ports displayed here unless you want them to. Maybe some sort of a toggle option. And then you could actually have all of your ports just display inside of a ports folder. Now the ports are going to exist in every folder you go into. So if you go into Super Nintendo, the ports are gonna come along with you. And if you really don't want that to be the case, or if you installed a bunch of ports you don't want, use that launchers manager and just remove them so that way they aren't cluttering up your navigation or your carousel. But as you can see, we've got all of our ports here, and then we've got all of our additional standalone applications. We've got the Amiberry here, we've got Drastic, and then we've got our folders for our games. You're gonna see that I still have all the ports. I still have access to all of the specific console folders that we created, as well as that Spyro folder that we created. But we also do have our Nintendo 64 games here. So they are kind of filtered in with the ports. This is what I'm hoping that they make an adjustment on. Uh, I did kind of make that suggestion to a couple of the developers. I don't know how difficult or easy it is to implement something like that. But in an ideal world, if you select Super Nintendo as your folder and you go into those games, the only games that'll display are the Super Nintendo games, as well as the additional folders to kind of jump back and forth or any of the standalone apps like RetroArch or PPSSPP or any of those sort of things. So that would be more ideal. So that way you don't have all of these ports cluttering up your navigation, but those games are present and they are visible here. So it is really cool. I am gonna jump into one more folder here just to show you guys as well. And now we are in the Nintendo DS folder. As you can see, the ports are still here, but we do have our Nintendo DS games. So again, I'm hoping that they tweak this so we have a little bit more customizability and we don't have to look at all these ports in every single folder and every navigation area that we look. Now moving along, if you wanted to get back and you just wanna see everything you have on your USB drive, what you're actually going to want to do is to find your folder manager. For example, this folder menu right here, we're gonna enter into this. And then once we're in our folder selection option, we don't actually wanna select a folder. What we wanna do is press the back button. And it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you want to exit without selecting a folder? The answer to that is yes. And then it's gonna bring us back into our main carousel. And right in the main carousel is where we're gonna have access to 
all of our games combined. So here's our PlayStation game, we've got a Nintendo game here, our ports are still here, N64, and even the built-in games that are originally stock on the PlayStation Classic. But I think that's all I'm gonna show you guys in this video, but please let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this desktop app. Please consider giving the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you did not like it. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.